78% of suicide rates worldwide are men, what can we do to help them? Provide more opportunities to form communities and activities that cater to different men's needs. A lot of us don't have friends or intimate platonic relationships, and we're in desperate need of that. I'm a 34-year married man who is also a father and I have no friends that I see or socialize with on the regular. I think this is a part of aging and of having a family that needs me. The same can also be said for my wife, she is the only person in her circle of friends who is a working mother and is married so she pretty much never sees any of her friends. Sometimes things like family duties can just bury all your free time outside of work. Not turn them away when they tell us what they're struggling with. Oh my dog this blew up. Anyway I'm so sorry to everyone who posted here sharing their cases of being turned down. I hope you all find someone who is gonna listen and help you, blue heart, sparkling heart, it's always the same. Oh man that sucks, but you wouldn't believe how hard it is for me. Yeah it's hard, if a guy says he feels bad, in most cases it's because he reached his limits. It's sad skeptical. Don't shame us for asking for help or appearing weak. Was here for this, stop calling men pussies for having feelings. Humans feel feelings and it's normal and expressing them doesn't make them less of a person, no matter their chromosomes. Even joking about it is bad for us. Treat us like humans. I was sexually assaulted as a child and frequently tried to harm myself but whenever I talked to someone about it they scoffed and said I was telling fibs. That's why I struggle to open up, because I always think someone will tell me I'm doing it for attention. I told my wife that I was molested as a child. It took me nearly 10 years to work up the courage to talk about it. Her response was well, I can understand why she did it, and that was it. My beautiful children are all that keep me going at the moment. You better believe I won't be talking about it again to people face to face. We like hugs. Just hug PLS. I want to hug edit wow that's a lot of hugs hugs everyone who saw this. I'll hug you. It's a dude hug, hands above the waist. Big fat guy, so it's like a duvet. Anyone else want one? Probably do something about the male homeless problem. Last stat I saw was around 85% of the homeless population was male. In my town, there is exactly one homeless shelter that will admit men, even when it's below freezing outside. The rest have a very strict women and children only policy. They'll turn away entire families unless they're willing to split up and send the father back out into the cold. Statistically speaking men work more, work longer hours, work in more dangerous professions and consume more drugs, alcohol and other. In addition men, on average, have fewer close friends and feel lonelier than women. I think the fatigue of such a life can be quite draining. I don't think the problem is that men do not talk about their feelings. I think the problem is that they often don't have someone to talk to. In addition, it can be quite hard to make new friends. Especially when you are past your 20s. You know, people you are potentially interested in are married and have kids. They are preoccupied with their own lives. I felt very lonely and sad after my last long-term relationship ended. It took me over 6 months to find new friends and I'm a hardcore extrovert. Still, I made a bunch of new friends within the past year or so. I'd like to encourage anyone who feels lonely to put yourself out there. Talk to people. If you like them, ask them if they'd like to hang out with you. Do you know how I became friends with one of my best friends? I straight up told him that I felt lonely and that I like him and would like to become friends with him. And for those of you who already have plenty of friends and a busy life, Maybe make some room for people in your community who aren't as blessed as you are. Compliment them, even if it's something small. Wow that's a nice shirt, it looks good on you. Your hair looks nice today. A girl complimented my nose 4 years ago, weird I know, but I still remember that compliment. Two girls have complimented my teeth in the past 6 years, I remember their names. Compliments matter. Give us one compliment. Just one. A girl once said I had really pretty eyes. That shit was 7 years ago and I remember it perfectly because it's all I've gotten in 7 years. I had a patient tell me my eyes were a lovely shade of shit stained green and I still remember it 6 years later. Not only because it was a good burn compliment but because men just don't get any form of compliments often. I generally make it a point to compliment my wife several times a week. We're going out. You look fantastic she just got back from the gym. Booty on point, babe etc. She also can't walk 5 feet without some rando complimenting her. I get about one or two compliments a year at most from her, generally I have to solicit them, too. I've even discussed it with her several times. Hasn't changed anything. Treat their mental health seriously. When they are struggling with a problem the only advice that is given to them to man up. Which, in my opinion, they have and they just need actual help. Absolutely. 
Getting help should be seen as a way to man up because it's the strong thing to do. Man up hurts way more than a lot of people realize. It's one of the most painful things to hear. Stop telling them to man up or grow a pair because men suffer too. This. When I got a knee injury which the 911 crew said I normally should be passed out from the pain, the only thing I was worried about was whether people would notice I had a tear coming out of my eye. Destigmatize men talking about their feelings and thoughts. Not only that, but make men's resources a normal thing. When I was finishing high school and visiting colleges, I noticed that almost all had a women's resources center, but none, that I saw, had a men's resources center. I definitely think that colleges making their campuses a safe, healthy place for women is extremely important, but they should be doing it for men as well. I realize men don't have to deal with sexual assault and other issues nearly to the same extent as women, but there are many other factors that can contribute to a student's well-being. I think, especially in the formative years while young men and women are in college, they should be given resources to deal with whatever is causing them to feel anxious, depressed, alone, etc. Hugs, compliments and cuddles. Men does not get enough of these things. Yeah, this hits home, pretty much to the point that when I actually do get these things, I become internally uncomfortable. Almost don't feel worthy of them unless I've literally saved a life or done something amazing. Work towards fixing the fact that most men have some form of depression. As Thoreau said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Is that true? Do most men have depression? Not abandon your best friend of 10 years after he begged you for help. Fuck you, Sam. Fuck you, Sam, on this guy's behalf. Fuck you, Chris. Kill us yourselves. That way the suicide rate is lower. I'm something of an activist myself. I like this proactive approach. I want to make a difference. A previous member of the Norwegian royal family committed suicide this Christmas, 50-year-old male. After this the Prime Minister told the public that she wanted to investigate the mental health of the population, especially for girls. Sometimes I hate politics. We are failing our precious boys. His name was Ari Ben. He was married to Princess Martha Louise, the daughter of King Harold. Ari and Martha divorced a few years ago. He was an author and artist. He lived in NYC a lot because he thought that's where he actually belonged. He left two young daughters behind, one held an eulogy at the funeral that brought the whole country to tears, pleading people to reach out for help instead of ending it all. Hit the country like a ton of bricks during Christmas. US-centric response. So many responses are around supposed cultural insistence that men be tough or stoic. But over the last few decades there has been a huge cultural push to make it okay for men to be sensitive and share feelings. An American male is way more encouraged to express his feelings than he was in 2000, or 1990, or 1980. Has this correlated to a decrease in the male suicide rate? Is there an objective increase? Or is this all perception based on increased information availability? Real questions. Encouraged to share? Yes. Supported when he does? No.